the California Congressman Adam Schiff just turn on the television at any point in the day, any time, any channel, because the top ranking Dem on the House Intel Committee is uh, the main proponent of the Russia collusion narrative. All you have right now is a circumstantial case. Uh, actually, no, Chuck. Uh, I, I can tell you that the case is more than that. I don't want to go into specifics, but I will say that there is evidence that is not circumstantial. One of the messages that this uh, Russian advocate may have taken back to Moscow is the Trump administration will be very amenable to repealing the Magnitsky Act. The Russians gave help, and the president made full use of that help, and that is pretty damning. Here, here's the problem. He's like a carnival barker, but there's nothing under the tent. There's not a shred of evidence backing up his accusations. But that doesn't stop him from playing the mainstream media like a fiddle. And we're going to discuss this now with Michelle Malkin in a moment. But first, let's go to Fox News chief national correspondent Ed Henry with more. Ed. Good to see you, Laura. The fact that allies of President Trump are now turning up the heat on Schiff may help explain why today the top Democrat on the House Intel Committee tried to point the finger elsewhere. Schiff tweeting, quote, I'm increasingly worried Republicans will shut down the House Intelligence Committee investigation at the end of the month. And, quote, it appears Republicans want to conduct just enough interviews to give the impression of a serious investigation. Well, how serious has that investigation been? Let's dive deep on what happened when Donald Trump Jr. arrived to testify on December 6th behind closed doors for over seven hours. While he was still behind closed doors mid-testimony, CNN was already posting stories suggesting Donald Trump Jr. was testifying to something nefarious. CNN reporting that according to multiple sources familiar with the testimony that was still going on, quote, Donald Trump Jr. told House investigators he did not communicate directly with his father when confronted with news reports about his June 2016 Trump Tower meeting. Instead, Trump Jr. said he was speaking to White House aide Hope Hicks about how to respond to the reports. That sparked a flurry of reports suggesting maybe Hope Hicks, the White House communications director, had some deeper, unspecified role in a collusion narrative even though it was not clear that there was anything criminal or even inappropriate about those conversations. Well, the new information I'm told tonight by Republicans close to the committee is that Donald Trump Jr. and his attorney were asked to surrender their phones before he went behind closed doors for that testimony. But then during the hours of testimony, they noticed Adam Schiff was leaving the room at various times. And then these stories started popping up on CNN and elsewhere about the testimony, leading them to believe the leaks were coming right from the top. But since Donald Jr., uh, Trump Jr.'s team didn't have their phones, they didn't find out about these stories popping up on CNN and elsewhere until several hours after the, after the testimony started. That's why they're demanding the Justice Department investigate whether it was Adam Schiff himself or other top Democrats that did the leaking. And they think that's why Schiff came out today, Laura, and started trying to shift the blame and say the Republicans are trying to shut down this investigation. They're saying... Donald Trump Jr. was testifying to what he knew, and during the testimony, leaks were springing up everywhere. I love that, leaving the room. It's like kids in class, so they're leaving to like get the notes that they stored under the toilet or something in the, in the bathroom. And I appreciate it. Thanks Good so deal. much. <laughs> and joining us now with a reaction from Colorado Springs, Michelle Malkin, the host of Michelle Malkin Investigates on CRTV. Michelle, I mean, you cannot make this up. It is so patently obvious what's been going on. There's zero to the Russian collusion story, but Schiff is trying to fan any ember that's out there, and he runs out of the committee meeting, and that's what he had to have been doing. I'm sure he's not going to the bathroom that much unless he has some undisclosed prostate problem or urinary tract problem that we're not aware of. But, but what, what, what do we make of this uh, perpetual tease by Adam Schiff? Yeah, well, there definitely is a leak problem, and it may not be urological in nature, uh, but certainly I think the question here is, Laura, will, as that old World War II saying used to go, loose lips sink shifts? And I'm glad the heat is being turned up on him. I'd like to know how we say... Um, blabby McBlabbermouth in Russian um, because this diversionary tactic, uh, this tweet storm, um, I think is, is an indication that he's quite worried that it will be traced back to him. And it, it is interesting, isn't it, Laura, that when um, Mr. Uh, blabby McBlabbermouth of the House Intelligence Committee goes on the collusion narrative network, that they never ask him about all of these botched stories uh, that clearly seem to point back to whoever's uh, um, leaking these false stories in the first place. Hmm.
And, and Michelle, there could ob obviously be a violation of health ex ethics rules because you are not to be giving this information to the press or to anyone uh, when it's a, a closed door session like this. And yet somebody, and I, I mean, I don't know who else it could have been. I mean, I guess it could be someone else, but he's the only one. He kept leaving the room. He's the only one out there day after day after day teasing, as you saw with uh, Chuck Todd, not just circumstantial evidence, he said, but we have other evidence of Russian collusion. And then there's never, and again, it's a perpetual tease. There's never any payoff. Yes, I mean, Adam Schiff has fired more duds than the North Korean missile program over the last year. And, um, and the question is, is, is just as much about his culpability. At the very least, as you say, these would be uh, ethical violations um, from the House Ethics Committee. Um, but the, then the, there's also uh, all of the enablers in, in the media who have put him on nonstop. And I think there actually have been um, records of, of the amount of time he has spent um, shilling for the collusion narrative. So um, what happened to all of the layers of and layers of fact checkers. Where is the extreme vetting um, from all of the other networks that put him on nonstop to blab like this? Where's the where's CNN and MSNBC saying, okay, like, where are the goods? I mean, you've been pr promising this since March. So give it, give yes. us something. You, you said your sources will be confirming. You'll you'll have more and Friday next week, uh, the week after, and then there's nothing that comes. Um, Michelle, I want to move on to another topic that I know you and I have spent a lot of years talking about, and that's immigration. Um, there's yes. a lot of concern that the Trump administration might have its hand forced on a DACA fix before the end of the year that will not include the key provisions of ending chain migration, ending visa lottery, e-verify the wall, all those things in the RAISE Act, which would be critical. I am very worried about this, and I'm not sure that the president is aware of these forces that are working behind the scenes to get this done. But my sources are telling me this push is real. And I was wondering what your thoughts on are, uh, on this, especially now that we're seeing border crossings going up again. From October to November, there was a big surge in family unit crossings and individuals crossing at the border and being caught. 40,000 was the number in November. Yes, as you say, Laura, you and I have been warning about the open borders faction within the Republican Party for a long, long time. Uh, and they're very good at what they do, and they are relentless. And that is why there needs to be a forceful pushback from grassroots conservatives to make sure that President Trump knows exactly what's happening. When you've got 34 House Republicans who've signed a letter demanding an immediate quote-unquote fix for DACA, that tells you how twisted the legislative priorities are of the Chamber of Commerce wing of the Republican Party, that they're more interested in a standalone fix to protect upwards of 800,000 illegal aliens than they are in fixing uh, the Obamacare system that has harmed exactly. millions of people in the individual individual market, let alone fixing all of these stupid programs that you and I have been talking about for years now, whether it's diversity visa or oh, ending no. chain migration. Where's the standalone bills and standalone yep. um, legislation for those? And the president has to understand, like people like Scott Taylor from Virginia. I mean, I know he's a former Navy SEAL and all that, but he is absolutely obsessed with pushing this DACA thing through. Absolutely obsessed. And I know this Mary Jones woman is going to be challenging him next year. But this, this there's a group of people who are pushing this, and the president, I hope, is aware of it. And uh, Michelle, you've done great work on this issue. We really appreciate it. And by the way, obviously, you know, the president uh, is none too pleased with the FBI right now.